What's up, guys? It's TechnoViking23 coming to you today with some Raid Shadow Legends. And we are actually in the Hard Doom Tower. We are on stage 50. Uh, the Scarab King boss wanted to kind of go over uh, the team I was able to use to finally get through this. Now, uh, originally, I was not going to push Hard Doom Tower that much, mainly because uh, I just don't get excited for Doom Tower. Uh, it requires a lot of champion rebuilding, a lot of regearing, and a ton of silver to spend. And I really need to be grinding gear on my account uh, to get some in-game Fire Knight gear. And I just didn't want to really spend too much time focusing on hard Doom Tower because it, it does get quite difficult uh, depending on how your champions are built. Uh, but then, you know, I kind of decided there's a lot of free rewards there just from completing the stages. I might as well go ahead and try it out. It's really the only content I have left to play. Uh, on my main account anyway, so I might as well start working on it because it's also going to force me to uh, go ahead and start regearing some champions that I probably need uh, to improve on. So basically, I was able to brute force my way all the way up through floor 49 with my roster as it is currently. Uh, the first four bosses really were not much of a problem, and I was even able to beat the first Scarab boss just using uh, the team I had beat him with on normal. But then when I got to 50, the game changed quite a bit, and uh, he sent me packing pretty easily, uh, sent me back to the drawing board, and just was having a really tough time even getting halfway through his health, and I just could not beat it. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to have to go ahead and start working on some of these champions, getting them rebuilt, uh, getting their numbers up, probably build some champions that I haven't used before. But we did finally manage to bring him down. I'll throw up my screenshot here from my very first victory against the hard level 50 Scarab King, uh, who is pretty tough. He has 200 speed and about 200 resistance. He is one of the faster Doom Tower bosses. And uh, just if you go into him without the right combination of champions, depending on the strategy you're using, it can be really difficult to beat him. You kind of need to have shields up almost all of the time or have an incredibly high resistance team uh, to go against him. So a very tough boss. Then when you get to floor 90, his speed is going to go up to 225 and his resistance is 330. So you need a lot of speed and a lot of accuracy, uh, at least for the strategy that we're going to be using uh, to take him down here, which is essentially keep his turn meter controlled fully, not let him take um, any turns at all if we, can, if we can get through it that way. And that way we just keep his turn meter out. We don't have to worry about anything. And we just have to wear him down with a destroy set on a couple of our champions. Now, I want to give a huge shout out to Soda Dragon. Uh, he is actually a fellow raid content creator, and I got the idea to build this team from watching one of his videos, which I am going to link down below so you guys can check it out. Um, strongly suggest you guys go check out his channel if you have not already. He is one of the best raid content creators I think I've ever watched. Uh, he's got very in-depth guides goes into a lot of detail on the champions, uh, on the boss strategies. He's got hard Doom Tower stuff, just general game stuff. He covers pretty much everything from early game to late game. Uh, very, very excellent content creator, puts a lot of work into his content, and um, I've found it very enjoyable, and it helped me out quite a bit. I'm gonna put some screenshots up here, uh, showing you like parts of his video where I kind of took uh, to build my team from, and that's why I'm giving him a shout out here, because I got most of this idea from his video. Uh, now his team is pretty much the one I'm trying to go for when I get to hard 90, but I kind of ran out of silver, so I had to kind of substitute a couple different champions I thought would work, but Stagnite, Allure, and Metal Shaper obviously all came from the video that he was working on. That's where I kind of got the numbers I needed to go for. On them, uh, his team also uses Visix and Armager, who I do have. Uh, I actually have five Visix, so I have plenty of, plenty of Visix, but I'm going to build a Visix. The problem is my destroy gear was not good enough to build more than one champion. My Arminger is also, um, he hasn't been used for a very long time, so his gear is not good enough to bring into Hard Doom Tower. He does not have the speed or the accuracy. And Stagnite got my best destroy set so that he could work in this comp. He's the only one in this comp with the destroy set, which is why it takes a little bit of time. Now, I think when I get another destroy set worked in that has enough speed and accuracy on it, we'll be able to get these times down a little bit. So we will eventually be building an Allure, or I'm sorry, an Armager uh, and a Visix to bring in. We'll take a look at them, uh, you know, here in a minute after we go through the boss fight. But Soda Dragon was incredibly helpful. Uh, you, you know, seeing his guide video on this really gave me a lot of different ideas. And I was trying to think, you know, who do I have that I can control the turn meter with 
where it's not going to require me to build two more champions because basically allure stagnite and metal shaper it cost me about 50 million silver uh to rebuild them all to be able to use against this boss and i'll show you their builds here once we get through this uh, but it's very expensive when you have to go in and regear champions and you're running gear up to level 16 and the speed requirements especially for metal shaper you got to get him up around 240 speed so he's constantly going uh, with his two turn shield and keeping that on you so you're not getting attacked uh, you're going to wind up blowing a lot of silver and i just did not have enough left to try to gear up uh, visix and armager so I thought, you know what, I've got Lysandra. She's in a really, really solid build for uh, 3v3 Arena. And her accuracy and speed were right where they needed to be. And then I also do have Lady Kimmy, who I got from the guaranteed 150 Ancients event. And uh, she's built for my Gold 4 Arena team that I use for farming. She's my third fastest champion on the account. So she was definitely ready to go. She's already built with very high speed and very high accuracy. So she fit right into uh, this team. So that's kind of what I did. I just substituted them in. I'll eventually will build the Armager and the Visix later. But the cool thing is with this team, we're able to do it on 50 pretty easily. And I'm guessing it might work on 90, but we're not going to make it to 90 on this rotation of the Doom Tower, unfortunately. I got started on hard way too late. I think there's only a day or two left. So uh, we made it to floor 60 with another spider. So I guess we'll just have to wait for the next rotation and see how far uh, we can push on that. But uh, one thing I did notice on this team was when I was running Lady Kimmy in the lead with her Doom Tower speed aura, it was not always 100% because the team would wind up getting too fast and they would start going out of rotation and the Scarab King would be able to sneak in a couple of turns there, which is absolutely disastrous if he gets that provoke up on anybody, especially Metal Shaper. It's pretty much good game. Uh, and you have to start all over again. So I redid the team makeup and I put Allure into the lead so that they're all just running on their speed that I had built them to. And it just began to work pretty much perfectly from that point. Now you still can fail a run because unfortunately Allure is weak affinity here. So she can sometimes hit weak three times in a row on her A1, which is that ability that decreases turn meter. Uh, we do have some custom settings on this team as well. I have it so that we don't get a lot of buffs up. So we don't have to risk the Scarab King using the ability where he steals all your buffs and tears them off of you. Uh, but we have a lure set to basically only use her A1, so she's constantly hitting that decreased turn meter. Uh, I believe we turned off Lady Kimmy's A3. I could be wrong on that, but we'll check in a minute. And then I turned off Metal Shaper's A3 as well, I believe. So he's only using his A1 uh, and the A2 ability where he puts up the shields uh, every two turns. Uh, he does have to be fully booked here as well with the Metal Shaper. My Stagnite here does not have any books. He's actually the freshest level 60 on my account. Almost two years into the game, I just recently pulled a Stagnite. Pretty funny. I have never actually pulled a Stagnite uh, or a Tayrell. Those were two of the big epic champions a lot of other people were using for a long time, and I never actually pulled him on my main. So he's the first Stagnite I've pulled on this account, and he was fresh, so I was able to just build him right from the ground up, which was pretty cool. So we got him to level 60 and uh, just built his gear Right into him, his masteries are done, but he does not have any books at all. We'll take a look at the masteries, obviously, um, on all these champions uh, when we get to that point of the video. Kind of just wanted to give a quick general overview, though, here, and uh, kind of show the team in action going up against the Scarab boss. Uh, I'll go ahead and speed this up to the end here so you can see them with the victory screen. But again, massive shout out to Soda Dragon for um, his video that I watched on this. Uh, incredibly helpful, explained everything, you know, all the strategy, basically how this works uh, for both level 50 and level 90 uh, in the Heart Doom Tower. And again, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pin his channel in the first comment and uh, pin a link to his video uh, that you can watch on the Hard Scarab King if you're having any trouble in the Harm Doom Tower. But uh, definitely go check him out, guys. He's a great content creator, puts out a lot of good videos. And uh, it was kind of cool to basically uh, be able to build this team and, and be able to progress a little bit into the hard Doom Tower. Uh, it's really the only content I have to play right now since I finished Faction Wars. And a Platinum Arena push is kind of out of the question given that I don't have a lot of the meta void champs that I need for it. And it's also at 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> where I live. So I kind of have to go to bed so I can get up for work the next day. But there you have it. We went ahead, uh, got the run done there. 9 minutes, 23 seconds, 579 turns. We don't really care how long it takes. We just want to get through it one time. Um, I don't plan on farming this because I've got en enough uh, immunity gear already. And uh, I'm mainly just farming Frost Spider in this run. But just wanted to get the get it out of the way, get it finished to make sure that next time this rotation is up, we'll be able to get through it, um, you know, hopefully a little bit quicker. So anyways, without further ado, let's jump in and check out the team setup and check out the builds on all of these champions. 
All right, guys, we are back here in the main account. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of these champions we just used uh, to beat the Scarab King. Then we'll go over the team setup a little bit. First off, as usual, I want to stop in the Great Hall so you can kind of see how we get um, the stats we are getting from some of these bonuses. My Great Hall is not amazing, uh, but it's halfway decent. I'm working pretty hard on it all the time, trying to get the stats built up and get some more gold in there, but that'll give you a good idea there of just how we have it going so far so let's take a look at our champions we do use on this team our first is going to be lady kimmy you can see here we have her in divine speed perception and a speed set now i use her mainly uh in gold four arena uh it's kind of a booster buff removal you can see we do have an accuracy banner on there with a double speed roll uh we just got her in an attack amulet because it got two accuracy rolls and then just a defense ring um, with some good sub stats there. But you can see her total stats here, 37,000 HP attack and defense are pretty decent. 308 speed, she's actually the third fastest champion on my account uh, behind my Arbiter and my Lydia. Uh, crit rate we got to 93, crit damage 106. We're not really too worried about those, especially when we're going up against Scarab King. We really just want that accuracy uh, to be high enough to where she's landing her debuffs and turn meter, and then her speed at 308 is well above uh, the 240-ish area we need to be there. And that's kind of why I just threw her in. Uh, she'll probably be replaced with Visix or Armager at some point, but she allowed us to get the job done. And uh, you can see her masteries here are not quite finished yet. I'm still working on those, still farming up Minotaur a little bit, but that'll kind of give you an idea there of what we've got. And then I don't actually believe... Okay, she does have a couple books. Looks like four books went into her, and they all went into her A2. So that's kind of interesting. All right, let's go find Lysandra. She was the other legendary that we were using here. And again, I use her mainly in 3v3 arena and sometimes in High Elves Faction Wars. Uh, her gear is not all rolled up, but her masteries are fully complete, and we did go with Eagle Eye. Uh, any champion that I really want to hit a very high accuracy threshold that we don't need to be doing damage with, I usually will take uh, the Eagle Eye mastery there uh, to make sure that we can get that little accuracy bonus there. And you can see here we kind of went the same way with sets on her. She's an all accuracy and a perception set. Uh, to kind of get her accuracy threshold up there pretty sure yeah she's an accuracy banner as well with a double speed roll which is pretty nice and then we kind of just went with whatever we could get for the amulet to get her accuracy and then just a defense ring here none of this is all fully rolled up and you can kind of take a look on her stats here about 40k health attack defense around 2000 speed is 251 fast enough to do the scarab like i said we just need to be above that 240 threshold not really too worried about crit rate or crit damage and then her accuracy is at 412, which uh, should be enough even at hard floor 90 when he has, uh, I believe, 300. 30 resistance, a little bit overkill there, but should be plenty. You can never have too much accuracy when you are going into uh, champions that have high resistance or even the bosses that have the higher resistance. So that's kind of a look at the two legendaries we had on the team. Now let's go down here and take a look at some of the others that we were using find our stagnite here there he is now he is like i said the freshest level 60 on my account he's just recently been built you can see he is in the destroy set he's basically in the best destroy set i could put together for speed uh, and accuracy so it's pretty solid take a look at his masteries again we went eagle eye on him to get that extra little bonus there and then we went attack tree to get him a little bit of extra damage since he does have the destroy set and is the primary person doing damage uh, against the scarab there and we can see here we do not have any books at all on him eventually we will book him up because he is a very very solid champion we'll take a look here at his accessories he does have again an accuracy banner we got a single roll with speed on there we hit one roll on the defense amulet and then we just kind of rolled up um the ring just because it had some decent stats for him uh, he's basically in six star speed boots in a perception set, two piece with accuracy chest. I uh, wish I would have had a six star for this, but the five star was enough to get us where we needed to be. And then we've got him in a crit rate with destroy. Uh, the weapon here that hits speed twice. We've got a helmet here that hits speed three times. So that was pretty good. And then we have a shield that hit it twice with an accuracy roll on there, which was pretty nice for him too. So you can see there a pretty decent build on him. 238 speed is right around where we want to be. Uh, 388 accuracy again a little bit over but you know can never have too much when we're trying to land those debuffs and the main thing with him is we are trying to land his a1 here uh, which has the decreased speed debuff because when we put that decreased speed debuff on the scarab king 
uh, it's going to allow us to keep that turn meter down because he's not going to build the turn meter as fast with the speed drop down. And then that way when we hit those decreased turn meter attacks on him, uh, it's going to keep him from being able to get up to where he can take a turn. So that's kind of what we went for there. I think we already showed the masteries there and he doesn't have any books. And then we have our allure. Uh, she might be, yeah, she's back up here. Um, actually one of the champions I'm kind of most proud of here because the build I got her in is was pretty good I thought it was and this is kind of why I need to start going into rebuilding some of my champions because I'm at the point where I'm getting better gear on my account and I'm able to put some pretty nice builds together uh, for some of these champions and uh, we see again mastery same thing we went with the um, with the eagle eye I did put her in damage because I actually was going to try to put her in a destroy set but we didn't actually have one so I had to just go ahead and get her into speed and accuracy so we have two speed sets two divine speed and then two perception i think accuracy banner on her again this is why it's important to farm that spider just so you have these six star banners for like accuracy resistance whatever stat you're really looking for because it can really allow you to do some cool stuff with your build uh, we got one accuracy roll on the amulet unfortunately I was hoping for more but that's what we went with and then we got the attack here just to help her do a bit more damage so we have also an accuracy six star uh, accuracy chest in the perception set which is a huge um, piece to get because you can also get that extra 40 uh, accuracy from the set bonus so on top of having the accuracy chest that's going to give you a ton and then we have her in a six star set of crit rate gloves uh, with resistance accuracy a little bit of speed there and uh, it's important with the lure you have to hit that crit cap of 100 uh, percent to make sure she is landing that a1 it's her most important ability uh, we put her in some speed as well up top here again we got a nice triple roll there on the helmet uh, you can see here we got some accuracy speed resistance and then obviously the six star speed boots which unfortunately rolled um, attack flat three times i was kind of hoping to get the crit rate on her it would have made her a little bit easier to build but we i did able we, uh, we were able to still get her in a pretty good spot um, again she doesn't really have any books so there's not a champion you really need to put books on I hadn't touched her in a long time, basically since I beat uh, Demon Spawn Faction Wars. But this is her attack right here. It attacks three times at random. It decreases the target's turn meter by 25% on each critical hit. That's why you want to be at 100% plus on the crit. And uh, that's why we turn off her other abilities, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. So that way she's always putting that A1 on the Scarab to make sure we get the turn meter down. Because uh, if she does take a turn and uses a different ability, it's possible for him to get to a point where he can go fast enough uh, to get a turn in if she doesn't land that or if she does hit weak with it so we kind of make sure um, that we're only using that a1 uh, when we're running her there all right and our final champion we were using is metal shaper he's gonna be a little bit further down here now on him uh really the only thing you've got to make sure on him is that he is over uh the speed threshold of right around 240 uh so that he's going before the scarab king on his you know his third turn where he's going to replace his two turn shields he's got the shields for two turns on a two turn cooldown uh which is very important to use here so we have shields up on the team basically at all times so when i was building him that was the only stat i really cared about hitting was just getting the speed so his gear requirements were a little bit less but at the same time i also did put him uh into a shield set and the reason for that is so we can run this on auto uh, one of the problems you'll have when you're trying to beat these Doom Tower bosses is on the second wave right before them, sometimes your champions will use their abilities that they need to have ready to go for the boss. Uh, for example, if you're on the Nether Spider and you're running at auto, uh, one of your champs may use their nuke ability before you get to the Nether Spider and need to clear out those little baby spiders and you won't have it up when you need it and you'll wind up you know, failing the run or it'll just be a lot more difficult to get it finished. So this is basically up so that whenever we come into the Scarab King's room, we're going to have that shield up for three turns. So even if Metal Shaper doesn't have that uh, shield ability on cooldown, he's going to get it right back before our shield runs out. So we're always going to have a shield up and prevent the Scarab King uh, from doing those really nasty counterattacks and provokes and things to us there. So again, he's got the A1 here, which has a chance to steal buff, which is really no big deal. Uh, this is it, Fortified Steel right here. Puts the shield buff on our allies for two turns, equal to this champion's level. It's not a big shield. That's kind of the interesting thing here is the shield is very, very small, but it does work. Uh, does the job pretty well. Uh, rescue, I think I had turned off just so he's only using the A1 and the A2. And uh, we wound up having to fully book him just to get the books into the shield. You really want to get that cooldown so it's down to uh, the two turns there. Take a look at his masteries here. We did go ahead and went all the way down to War Master just so he can do some extra damage. Uh, but again, like I said, the most important thing was just hitting 
uh, the speed threshold with him. So we just put him uh, in the banner that had our best speed roll and really none of the rest of the stuff matters. We got the six star speed boots and then we got a speed set here that had a couple of sub rolls on the speed, so, you know, double roll on the shield, double roll on the helmet and a double roll on the weapon. So uh, I just kind of put them in that shield set, like I said, to make sure we're covered and we can run it on automatic. And prior to that, actually, I think it was on the first Scarab and Doom Tower, I had tried to use uh, Lodric Falconheart, and I actually do have him in a halfway decent Roy set. The problem is uh, his shield ability, you can get it down to two turns, uh, but you have to get all the books into it, and you need to get uh, six books in him. I have not really started working on his books yet, so he was not going to be viable against the scarab at 50 or not uh, hopefully someday we'll be able to build him up to where he can replace metal shaper because he's got a little bit of a better kit that he can use and plus he is in one of our destroy sets for the scarab we have been using him on normal a little bit too so he's a, definitely somebody we could look at possibly replacing uh metal shaper with in the future uh if we go that route but that's kind of something i wanted to go over real quick because he's another option for shielding who can get down to a uh, two turn to cool down there. We have our Visix here that we actually started working on. I just recently six starred this Visix. <laughs> so this will be my third level 60 Visix, which is pretty hilarious, but it's kind of fun, you know, just to goof around when you have multiple champions. You know, plus, we are getting um, the resources from the content creator program, so I like to use those to build champions. I don't like to sit on them for a while. It's those five star chickens that burn a hole in my pocket, and I just wind up building uh, different champions that we'll have fun with. So we've kind of started the groundwork on her. Uh, her masteries are actually already finished so that's why it's so important i was telling you guys uh to have these you know you got the accuracy banner here you can see we've already got her at 231 accuracy and that's only from basically her banner uh her amulet and then we got a uh okay just a banner and amulet we didn't get a roll in the boots and also the mastery so uh not that hard to build once you get to a certain point in the game and you're starting to get that better gear farming that gear up from spider especially for those banners they can be really helpful uh, now, Armager is the other uh, champion that we eventually will put into this composition. Uh, I talked about that a little bit in the first part of the video, but again, his build was absolutely terrible. Uh, he was built just barely good enough to beat the normal Scarab, and uh, I had not used Armager in a long time. I was really the only place I was using him. I wasn't using him anywhere else. So I took all his gear off of him already. It was, some of it was four star. It was really bad. And so we're just going to start from scratch and rebuild we've already got the crit rate gauntlets done there and we've got a weapon here and uh with him it's going to be a matter of finding enough accuracy so that he can land uh his turn meter here and we also have to make sure that we get the critical chance up to 100 percent so there we have it guys those are, uh that's a quick look at the champions that we were using and then some of the other options we're going to be looking at uh later on in the future so let me go in real quick here and we will take a look uh, and how we have this team set up. Go here into Hard Doom Tower and we will go to the Scarab King. So here you see actually it is a preset team that I did put together that was mainly to turn off some of the skills. So let's go in here. I need to better organize this a little bit so we have, we can get this to scroll here. So let's see, here we go, so Scarab King. So we got a lure in the lead there. Like I mentioned before, when I had Kimmy in there with the Doom Tower Speed Aura, it was making the team too fast because uh, they were all running at like 280 plus speed. And so it was kind of throwing things off at some point in the battle. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look here. So you can see a lure. We have Temptation and Hellish Blaze turned off. Uh, Lysander, basically everything is good. Lady Kimmy, we do have uh, the Spirit Flux turned off. And that's basically so we don't, we're not putting up a lot of buffs on our team. So the Scarab King won't use that ability to tear them off. Uh, Stagnite is pretty much the same and the metal shaper we have rescue turned off again so we don't get those buffs going out and again the thing is we don't really need them because if this works out the way it's supposed to uh the scarab king is really not going to take any turns so it's not something uh that we're too concerned about uh but there you go guys that's pretty much going to do it for the video again another uh shout out for soda dragon uh super helpful with his content and really helped me uh with the blueprint kind of to make this team his Doom Tower videos are excellent. Again, I'm going to link to his channel down below so you guys go check him out. Uh, definitely give him a sub and a follow. And check out all his uh, videos. He makes some really great content for this game and uh, really in-depth guides uh, to a lot of the stuff that you can do in Raid. So anyways, if you guys have any questions about anything in the video, feel free to leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get you an answer as soon as I can. As always, I hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks as always for watching and I will see you again next time.